Hello. Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to Code Therapy. I'm speaking a little bit quietly and I'm feeling kind of sleepy. I actually did this pretty late last night, so I don't think I'm going to go as crazy tonight. I think I'm actually going to keep this down to kind of a nifty half an hour. So I'll do the little explanation at the beginning in as concise a way as I possibly can. Um, we are making a little game. It's called Dual M Back. Um, there's what Dual M Back looks like. It's sort of a memory game where you have to remember not only um, uh, the position of this little blob, but the position of it two steps back, or in fact, N steps back. The N is the the number of steps back you remember. And the back mm. is to remind you that it's back rather than looking into the future, which would be an excellent other game, but not a skill that everybody has. Um, so we're writing this and we're writing it in a language called Elm, which is functional and immutable, um, two things that not many uh, web languages are. It's designed to run in the browser. Looks a little bit like Haskell, if you've ever uh, messed around with Haskell. Many people have, many people have lived, but um, uh, for those who find Haskell a little too brain wrapping, uh, like me, um, I saw this as an opportunity to kind of play around with the ideas of functional, immutable programming uh, with something a little bit easier, something a little bit more immediate. So we've been playing around this for five days now. I know that because this is episode six. And uh, uh, I had a bit of a, a moment of an epiphany. That's Dashboard, my cat. She may come and pair program with me later. Um, with this function here. Now, this function is, uh, uh, I'm not sure, I'm, given that I'm going to try and wrap up as soon as possible, I'm not sure I'm going to go completely into my thoughts about this. And in fact, what I might do is a little summary video of what I was thinking when I wrote this, because I actually watched the video and played it back because it took me 40 minutes to understand this principle of functional programming. And it was fascinating watching my little eyes vanish into dots as I tried to get my head around it. But what you probably need to know is that um, we've now got to the point where, let's kick it up. It's our local version, where not only do we display the potential nine positions of the card, but the computer knows when that matches two steps behind it. So for instance, it went bonk and then back here so this is matches and we can go oh yeah that's a match and get an extra score of course this this the computer telling us this is a bit of a cheat um, so we've successfully got that going and we successfully also with this uh, random number generator kind of rigged things a little so that uh, uh, you're more likely to get a match than simple random probability these cards randomly appeared in a place, um, then I can never quite calculate the probabilities, but it's probably the chances of one out of nine and one out of nine. So that's maybe what one out of 81 turns. Seems a little excessive, but something like that. Um, and we've rigged it so that in fact, uh, two times out of every 10 times uh, the, the, the card will match. So I'm just going to, I was trying to think what I could do that would fit just um, uh, a good 20 minutes or so programming and I could document it. I could like see if the, see if these variable names are all still making sense because I, uh, I must admit I've been a bit slapdash with my variable names in the past. Let's, let's do that. So deck of cards so this is the model this this shows all the state that the um, program has one of the th function one of the features of elm and languages like this but particularly elm because it has comes with its own sort of uh, architecture like something like uh, ruby on rails does 
or react uh, that you stuff all your state all of the things that change that the get the program knows in this data structure here and it knows three things it knows the deck which is the set of cards that have previously appeared um, a card being one blob in one of these positions n which is the n in dual n back and the current score i'm I wonder if N is a little bit too clever, but I don't really know um, how best to cards back to match. So these actually turned out pretty well. I'm not actually too bothered with these, except that we don't actually use reset. So let's get rid of reset. Yep, still works. We never used it. Our cell is int. Yeah, if this was a fancier language, we could actually describe a constraint on that int. We could have said that it's only an int between 0 and 8. Um, some of the fancier languages even beyond Haskell have, what are they called? Dependent types that let you define things like that. It's great because if you create something and it gets more than 8, they can actually recognize that in the... Um, in the compile stage. Pretty amazing. Deck is a list of card. Well, I think we should probably put all of this stuff above the model. What do you think? Oh, it's 7 out of 10 and 3 times out of 10. Yes, because 1 of the 1 times out of 9. Oh no, let's see, that should be 8 times out of 10. sort of like calming educational tone to these things and uh, <laughs> we're sitting there going you know I don't know what I'm doing I'm really just doing this for, for therapy excuse me I'm just double checking some stuff Woo. All right, let's continue. Feel free to chat or ask me anything as we do this. Um, it can be about Elm, it can be about my job. I work for something, an organization called the Electronic Frontier Foundation. Some of you may know we fight for the rights of coders. Um, and I know a little bit too much about geek history. When I, I'm going to probably take a longer break. Um, this week was pretty intensive, but I'm going to take a little bit more of a break from code therapy soon and uh, think about the format a little bit. So if you have any ideas for stuff that we should do, chip in. I'm just going to structure it a bit more. 
Okay, so this is actually a little complicated, but makes sense if you understand um, Elm. Turns a randomized function that can either provide a new random card or pull out previous match. I suppose I've already said that. See how sleepy I am. This is sort of weird, this minus one. And I always want to work out, I've been thinking about, like, should flag that this is kind of weird, but I don't want to. Kind of a depressing day because of the um, so many shootings by police. Everybody in our office was kind of depressed. There's been there's a sort of odd well not odd but there is a definite solidarity between people working on civil liberties. I mean a lot of the civil liberties that we deal with are kind of eclectic. They're um, they're about you know, protecting people's right to send data on the internet or net neutrality or all of these things. But we did actually just do a post. Um, yeah. sort of sadly well-timed um, uh, about racial bias and the technology that people use for arrests. If you go to deep links, you can see that about that. There was a terrible decision um, in the U.S. Supreme Court a couple of weeks ago, no, a week ago now, um, which basically strips away your ability to um, be able to refuse a search. So things are compoundingly bad at the moment. And there are some bright spots, but when things come in a rush like this, as they do with random numbers, just to tie this back a little bit, you know, people often, when they try to be random themselves, they'll often try and avoid repeating patterns like, like that. Whereas in fact, truly random things have, have patterns in them that's, they occur in randomness. You can get like two in a row or even three in a row and it's not particularly more or less likely than any other unique sequence. Um, and so you get these clusters and it's very hard to tell whether the cluster means that there's a rise in things or or not. Um, but you do get an emotional response and the, the response to the last few days of, of sort of police mediated violence has been, and, and also tonight, I mean, I think that's that's part of the Emotional response, what's going on in Texas? Guys, it's a bit of a downer today. I'm sorry, I'm a bit sleepy. Okay, enough politics. Let's look here. Well, the update is pretty... Pretty... I don't really want to um, ruin this with... Comments... Definitely don't need to put, keep this in there. I think this was just to explain something. 
Still valid. Let's see. No, I think most of this is going to change anyway, so it doesn't make sense to tidy it up too much. Haskellism, but it seems like we could do it in Helm too. That bit prettier. There we go. All right. Well, we have a few minutes left. It seems silly to just do formatting, so let's. Commit that. But it's always good to tidy things up. You know, sooner or later, I'm going to have to like read this and not remember any of it. So, get nice and tidy helps. Commit. And commit. Quit that. And then push it to the GitHub. here so I don't have to do this every time it just pushes it without asking me for a password it's good for me and good when you're streaming you don't necessarily want people to work out what your password is just by listening to the key clicks uh, and then the other thing I wanted to do is just to make this click over every two seconds or so so what I think that what involves is we don't actually have any external subscriptions right now. So there's definitely one for timers in Elm. Uh, time. And we say bit more difficult than I thought because we need to so we can send a, a, a command every every so so many seconds so what we want to do is to trigger that once is that a subscription yeah I think so Subscriptions are. I think script subscriptions are signals. Oh look, here's a here's an example version. Or is this just the actual this is the at this but I haven't looked at it in a while. Hmm. 
So we can send something every So, so what we want to do is to trigger trigger it once when we create a new card. So here, something in model says waiting for choice just for now we'll call it that we'll give that forces a capitalization of tags and um, types, I think. <laughs> it's not Overwatch. Hello. Hi, <laughs> Gnu Sosa. It's pretty laid back today. Um, it's not usually quite, I'm usually a bit more frenzied than this, but uh, uh, and like often it just descends into an overwatch style. I get into the mecha and then start just shooting up um, uh, functions. Play of the game, deletion of line 30. Um, okay, so what we're gonna do here is and I think is that the function let's see hmm. gosh I really have to google everything tonight hello <laughs> hello ACOTN what are you? Uh, what are you saying? You've disappeared off my uh, my screen there. Hold on. Oh, uh, sure. Yeah. Let me let me show you if if this compiles. It's not. I mean, it was, we're not very far into this at all. I'm a pretty bad programmer. Bad programmer. But um. But I do like learning things. So let's have a look. We have this running in a browser because um, there's this little thing called Elm Reactor. I'm actually using something slightly different. I'm using something that's running off. Um... Here we go. So that's what we've got so far. <laughs> it's really exciting. Um, and that's generated. The, the table is generated here. The buttons 
are programmatically generated as well and they send little signals off and we've got some logic as well in the uh, it should tell when when the two things are matching when the last two things uh, match and that's a cheat because then I can go oh yeah I, I really recognize those two things and then and then we win computer and cheetah in perfect harmony I really got into programming writing cheats actually I used to um, it was my job in the local um, uh, fair use group to uh, write and try and rig up uh, uh, infinite lives in things like Chucky Egg for the BBC Micro. And so I would disassemble as best I could the machine code and try and uh, avoid the, the if out of lives, then die routines. And that was pretty much as far as I got. I, I, there, was this, there was this one moment where like, I had like someone gave me a lucrative offer at age like 13 or whatever to do a um a rom for the bbc micro and kind of like this i got so excited by like the little details i got really into doing the world's most perfect um command abbreviation system so you wouldn't have to type your commands in um fully kind of like tap completion but um, but but I didn't know about that and I got so into the algorithm for doing that which is not a hard algorithm that hours passed and I never actually finished the rest of it which is why I'm determined to finish this no matter what so uh, ACOTN have you have you played around with a functional language before it's I always wonder like this already looks kind of gobbledygook to me if I squint at it but Hard. So kind of what I want to do here, so this 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 bit here is modifying, well not modifying because it's immutable, but returning a new version of model with a new card added to it. And what I want to do is to also turn on that waiting for choice thing which will trigger a two second timer. And I know that there is some syntactic sugar easier. I know, I know, right? I can't, Elm is sort of sitting in this interesting place between a tiny language for a very narrow domain and something a bit more ambitious. I really, I really like what they're, they're doing to try and popularize Haskellian kind of thought. What time is it? I did promise myself I would knock off. I'll, I'll give it another 10 minutes. Um, Okay, so let's look at Elm syntax. New Sosa is an awesome programmer, and so this must be, I feel like this must be an exercise in massive frustration, especially if you did know Elm. Just watch people, it's like watching people fail to play football. They should do that. They should have shows where people are really bad at sports, and then you can just have commentators rather than cheering. Just I mean, they do that anyway with professionals, but it would be much, much more fair if they did it to people who were really actually terrible. I would pay to watch that. I'd pay that. I, I might even be willing to appear on it as one of the terrible. Cool libraries. There's, there's definitely uh, basics here. Quality comparison, right, exactly. Preferably a, a fan, right? Preferably like the person who complains the loudest in the stadium in the previous event. Like there should just be a point where all of the team people, maybe somebody on Twitter, they all just turn to the person and go, oh, oh, perhaps you'd like, perhaps you'd like everybody to hear the funny thing you just said and the rest stadium goes quiet because they know what's going to happen next and they pull them on good in um, boxing wrestling archery Australian rules all right so I think it's one of these piping yeah exactly there should be just a card that you can play 
like um, uh, Willy Wonka's Golden Ticket. Like basically, every <laughs> every ten thousandth pint of beer, you get a card that enables you to call someone's bluff in the pub. And just go, oh, well, if you think that's so good, why don't we agree to leave Europe and you are in charge? Forward function application, backward function application. Okay, so let's try and understand what I'm trying to do here. I'm gonna go into the REPL is where I get stuff about types. Um, okay, so what I want is I have a thing M and M is hello Snowy. What's wrong with you, Repl? That's not so good, is it? Maybe if I go there. Okay, interesting bug. Oh, but my file does not exist. Oh, I guess it's trying to live in the. Okay, um. M equals hello. It's maybe. Goodbye. Look at me actually changing the syntax problem. Okay, that's I'm always doing that. It should be equals when we're defining it. Ah. Oh, thank you. Yak shaving. Do I have to define this as a type? Yes, I do. I bet I do. Excuse my typing as well. I'm really dead tonight. So this is going to be, oh uh, yeah, right. Okay, oh, right. Okay, it all makes sense, look. Try that, and then we, I think actually this would have been fine. Tells a little story, doesn't it? That record construction. Let A equals? Like in basic. Oh, God. What do you think, team? I tried the colons. They weren't doing any good. Can I just do it without one? Is it going to return something even if I do that? I was going to talk. There we go. Okay. Don't don't even ask. Don't know why that happened. Don't even ask. Equals dot. Do you think? Well, it appears to work now. Okay. So the way you would change that right, is you go bar and then you say hello equals four. Let's see. 
So I want to try and pipe those together. I wonder if I can do... Maybe there just isn't a way of doing that. I think I might just have to. That was an interesting fl flourish of exploration, but I think I'm just going to have to suffer it. So what we want to do is we take all of this and then see now now I'm going crazy now. I'm waiting for choice. True. Uh, what were the chances of that working? sounds terrifyingly similar to that you know, we just had. I'm looking for one of the following things. Closing bracket, lowercase name, white space. Ew. So can I not? So what we're ret we're returning two things here. We're returning um, a model and a set of commands in a tuple. So I'm trying to futz with the model. Well, fair enough. I'm rid of it. Yep. Stop timer. There's a type model, a tensor model, and it is just something very easy. Turn on the See, look, it's proper ID and everything. Just auto completed something. It's good. So, so there, are you still, Carlos, are you still, what's good about, um, oh, he's saying goodbye. Okay. Closure strict. Yeah, maybe I will try closure strict. Why not? Did that work? If it compiles, it will usually work. Yeah, okay. So then. Weirdly enough, subscriptions is the thing that sort of says, okay, look at these 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 um, these external events. And it actually runs often. It runs every time the model changes. So if Yeah, COTN, felt how good you were. <laughs> All right. um, time every second and tick. Um. <laughs> you were fine. <laughs> I 
we were mutually erasing the menu. It's like pair programming, isn't it? It's like things you're not supposed to say in pair programming. It's like, you idiot, I could have done that. Give me the keyboard. See, most of the pair programming I've done has been exactly like that. People sitting there. Hello, sorry about that. Something. Something. It keeps um, ratcheting up my CPU and then the oom killer kills um, my streaming program. So, strange language we use. Are you all back? I hope so. Occasionally have this great kid called Joshua who comes in and every time that happens Joshua goes why have you left I'm not leaving you I'll never leave you okay waiting for choice we set if waiting for choice is turned on then return that um something increases the cpu speed until everything freezes and then the oom um killer the out of memory killer um kills obs studio which is the streaming program and then everything calms down so i think it's obs studio but i don't know what triggers it um i have chrome running in another window to like check on um um, whether I'm actually broadcasting or not and I sort of I kind of suspect own Chrome a bit but um, but there isn't sort of some Columbo like evidence yet okay so we set the timer I think that's all we need for that let's just check no oh, you're right Oh, you run you run it too. Yeah, I don't. There's something. I mean, it it it, it fixes itself, but I wonder if people run it on a different machine or something. Okay, I am so sleepy. I'm beginning to lose my way a bit here. Right, right. I think the combination is part of what, what's going on here. Oh, I see. Okay, so we haven't we haven't written that command. Right. 
and something that not only is timer ended but also takes um, time. No. Okay, now we're talking. It's now going. Okay, you need to actually. You've created this thing. You actually have to do it. Send a new. Can we just say a simple typo? But that doesn't work it out, does it either? They do say that if you can get something to compile in a functional language or a strongly typed language, it will work. I somehow doubt it in this case because the logic was pretty chunky. Oh, we wouldn't actually know because it's, um, it's not doing anything. Um, Let's put in a word in programming. Yeah. Okay, debug log outputs to the console. Sorry if this doesn't show up very well. My giant face in front of it. Okay, so two seconds on, something happens. What we haven't done is get it to the point where it's going to call the next card, but I am going to call it a night because otherwise I'm going to be useless tomorrow. Okay, then it's running. 